Hey guys, this is Matt Beck from freesaloneducation.com. I'm sitting here with Robert Cromines. How are you, sir? I'm doing good, Matt. Good to see you again. So uh, this is, um, I'm going to say that this moment would probably be compared to when you sat down with Sassoon, for me, because for 10 years now, I've watched you, you know, followed everything that you've done and tried to do it in the best way that I could. So um, it's an honor to sit down with you and, and have a talk. Well, one of the most beautiful things about my Vidal Sassoon situation was the beautiful compliment he paid me. And I just got to say, I've looked at your business from a distance from the day you took it over. And I'm so proud and happy to congratulate you because you're doing a remarkable thing every day in your business. I think everybody knows how I feel about the industry. I hate the wannabes. I hate the pretenders. To dress up like a rock star is easy, but to live it at home is the hardest. And why I love you is at home you're living it and you're doing it, and that makes a big difference to me. Well, I appreciate that. And I think that, so I want to talk to you about, I guess, the, the few things, I guess, if I ever got to set, sit down with Robert Cromings, I would say is I, I want to know about, you were from Tennessee, right? I, or you're not from Tennessee, no. but you lived in Tennessee. Yeah, I did. And you did you start doing hair there, or? Yeah. Um, you know, the, the kind of record book goes, I was a young kid in Scotland. I wanted to be a hairdresser, but didn't have the courage. My family didn't support it. So my mom did a beautiful thing when she was young. She married an American citizen that was in the military. So I actually had an American passport. Okay. And at the age of 24, I decided I had enough of the UK. I got in my car. I drove to the airport. Didn't tell a f single person. I got in a plane, came to America, and I had relatives, distant relatives in the States that lived in Memphis, in the Mid-South, Mississippi. So within about three weeks of getting to the States, I went right to beauty school and enrolled. Oh, wow. Okay. And I'm in school maybe three, four months, and they come in and pop in a video of Paul Mitchell and JP. So when I knew nothing about the beauty industry, I made a decision in school because Paul was Scottish. He was a little crazy. I'm like, that's my guy. Yeah. And today, if you look at what I've accomplished, what I've done, all started from the same beginning, that same path. Uh, I made a great choice. And I was talking to some kids outside. I delivered pizza for a living. I once got robbed at gunpoint, you know, <laughs> nearly right. lost my life. And I thought, well, if I'm going to go through all the struggle of this to become a hairdresser, I'm going to make it pay off. Right. And that's one of the things that I really wanted to do to honor my to my teachers when I was in school. And I decided in school I'd get more out of my education than any other kid in our school. And I think I did that. So you never know where it's going to come from. And the other thing that I'm really passionate about is the loyalty. You know, I've been with Paul Mitchell nearly, you know, uh, 30 years. Yeah. And I really believe in that. It's really about believing in something and sticking by it. And, you know, for me, it's about the consistency. So, you know, anybody that's in love with a company and they stay with them, I'm like, well, I love you for that because you're loyal to it. Right. Uh, too many people are quick to change and move into different things, just kind of becoming opportunists. This industry is unfortunately built on people to believe in, like Vidal, like Paul Mitchell. Arnie Miller from Matrix was a man worthy of believing in. And I really get a little worried for the future of the industry because I don't think we're putting so many people out there to believe in. Right. And that's why your organization is so critical. We need to get some new faces out there that people can start to believe and trust in the same way the last generation believed in its old leaders. Right. So it's a beautiful business, but you've always got to play it forward. But it's about that commitment, and it means a lot to me, even as a salon owner. You know, people come and join and move on. They're nomads. Um, to me, get involved in something. Stay true to it. Put your time in. Write a passage. And the craziest things you could ever imagine can happen to you just like they happen to me. But being loyal is a big part of it. So, you know, you think about loyalty and uh, the people you hang around. I mean, it's a beautiful thing. So, um, you know, I've just been so fortunate to be believing in one company. People used to laugh at me as a kid. Oh, you're the Paul Mitchell guy. Right. They don't laugh today, Matt. You yeah. know, they kind of go, oh, I wish I'd done that. Right. I remember a kid saying in school, I wish I'd done what you did. I go, what was different about me? He goes, you would buy products out your own pocket to use on your beauty school clients. Yeah. I said, what did that make you think? He said, I wished I had. Yeah. It's a choice. And I think that's the part we have to understand. Every company can give you the opportunity. Nothing's in your way. And unfortunately, people seem to develop this false evidence. Well, because of that, I can't do this. Well, that's not what we're about. Nothing's in our way stopping us doing anything. Right. To be creative in the modern world is getting around that. And that's where my creative genius comes in. I don't care what obstacles are in front of me. My job is to find a curious way to get around it, and whether yeah. that's business or hairdressing. And you know me. That's how I think. So, um, you know, I'm a natural problem solver. Right. And I, I think that's a great part of my ingenuity. It's a hard thing to find in a person is a problem solver. A lot of people come 
uh, will come to you looking for the answers, I think. And it's even when you do hair shows or even when we're, we're filming this, I think it's like everybody comes to the one person for all of the answers. And I think that I think what's cool, um, you also mentioned about beauty school, buying your own products. Uh -huh. I, I remember when I was in school uh, 10 years ago, I had... I bought all my own Paul Mitchell products because I saw you at a show. I didn't know that you had done that, but I wrote my name on the bottle because you had to keep it from everyone. Uh -huh. And I lined them up on the station, and I was so proud of just – And it, it, I don't think it was ever about the bottle. I mean, I saw you talking, and I saw that it was – there was just so much more to the industry that I figured out at, on that at that moment. And that's what I wanted to go for was to be able to inspire people and to, you know – the Paul Mitchell part of it for me was that it was a connection to a group of people that I looked up to. And so I think, uh, you know, with creating free salon education, it's just uh, an evolution of that and that path. Well, you know, the world needs to be educated and inspired. And unfortunately, the industry is very new every year. It's like exfoliating in itself. You know, if you, I do a lot of trade show stuff. If you miss a trade show for two or three years, you walk around and people just wonder who the weird guy in the hat is. Right. You got to be present. You got to be active, you know, and you got to keep doing stuff to keep that energy. But, you know, the, the people you believe in and just like you may not have known my story, but you were prepared to do something remarkable compared to everybody else. And every day I'm looking for that talent of the future. People are prepared to do. I've got a young kid who works for me. His name's Austin Parent. I got him from the Connecticut school. This kid works on his days off in a salon he doesn't even work in, come prep water and do stuff. Uh, the kid wants my job so bad I can taste it, and he's going to get it. Yeah. Uh, I did an $800 retail day with him as my assistant the other day. I had 1600 in service revenue, and at the end of the day, he Facebooked me and said, if you could have just done two more clients, Robert, <laughs> we could have had a $2,000 day. There you go. That's S the push. So what I love is, yeah, I do have a bit of control and influence over a lot, but I'm influenced also by the young generations of hairdressers. And it's for them that I think we owe the industry to give them that fellow legacy that we had something to believe in, whether it was me that crossed your path. Um, they need that same thing. And who are going to be their heroes of the future? And that's the part that I want to listening to this, that why not you? Why not one of you? Because in the absence of leadership, any numbnut can take the microphone. Right. And I have a real issue with that. I care about the beauty industry too much. And uh, before Vidal passed away, one of the things he said to me is, I'm going to leave this to you now, Mr. Chromines. And I'm like, wow. I don't think I can do it single-handedly, but me and a few guys like me, we can keep this moving yeah. and continue to change an industry and how it thinks about it in the same profound way he did many years ago. Um, on one of the interviews I did with him, uh, he talked to me when he had a seven-chair salon. He was doing a photo shoot with David Bailey. The correct title to David Bailey is Sir David Bailey. He is one of the most famous British photographers in the world. Uh, Vidal's at the shoot, and David says to him, what's wrong with you today? Something's up. And he said, well, I have a seven-chair salon, and four of my staff just quit. Oh, wow. The one that stayed was Annie Humphreys. And through that devastation, as he spoke to me on the microphone about it, I could feel the emotion like it happened just yesterday, even though it was 50 years prior. I mean, you never forget that. Now, you would never imagine this icon, Vidal Sassoon, could suffer a walkout. Right. So if it could happen to me, it could happen to you, it could happen to you, Matt. I'm just saying these are the things we kind of show people through our experience. Vidal, as a kid, had the worst Cockney accent in the world. He, you couldn't understand him. And he knew in order for him to be the great Vidal Sassoon, he'd have to learn to talk eloquently. So he went to acting school to learn how to create words and noises. And I don't know if you ever heard the man speak. He's one of the greatest public speakers you'd ever hear, um, just in his word power. So the way he would make cheekbones and you know jaw lines and diff different descriptors about facial features he made them sound like so sexy you yeah. know um, <laughs> the passion and his words and everything else there's no doubt in my mind why he became one of the greatest leaders it wasn't what he did with scissors it's the way he communicated he was the most outstanding communicator i've ever seen and that wasn't natural it was by choice right so that's what i love is when you look at somebody's beginning story just go back to my beginning story delivering pizza going to beauty school at 24. you know most kids start at 18 and 20. that's my biggest regret where would i be today if i started at 18. so when you get around people's beginning like john paul my mentor lived in his car for two years started a company with 700 bucks uh, and now he's one of the fifth richest men on the planet right. he used to work for one of our competitors i'm not going to mention their name and he was fired many years ago, and they told him he wasn't management material. Nice. <laughs> I, I love that story because 
How can you imagine? So in your world of what you think a manager is, John Paul is one of the most outstanding managers, remarkable in every way. Yeah. So it's a beautiful thing when you can look at the history of it and get around people that can really inspire through their beginning story to help you f- develop your beginning story. We all start somewhere. Right. And success is a wonderful thing, but it's not a destination after three weeks. It's a journey of life. And definition of success to me is every day you're getting closer to your dream, you're successful. Right. Whatever that may be for you. And even to watch Vidal Sassoon, uh, Vidal Sassoon's dream process and what was success to him, um, his success was working off of an industry that became better because of him. Uh, we used to do photo shoots for Vogue magazine. We were treated like slave labor. And he changed all that with Richard Avedon. And he started to become an acquired result that instead of get the hair, he was like, the hair's not done yet. You'll wait on me. I'm Vidal Sassoon. <laughs> right. uh, he started creating a whole prestige to it. So an industry that was generally getting no money for haircuts. The only haircuts we were doing was cutting off fish hooks of perms. We were giving it away for nothing. He stood up and said, I'm going to invent a design called precision haircutting. And to a degree, if a client came in for a shampoo roller set, he would turn them away. To the degree, to be different, to get that new thing, he would turn away customer because that wasn't what he was about, to be clear on the vision and being true to that vision every day. No compromise. Yeah, sometimes things get watered down. Absolutely, and people start to just water down, dilute. Too many avenues. Be true to your vision, stick to it, be true to your business. And I'm just saying, be influenced by people, you know. If you take from one person, you're a stealer. If you take from many, it's research. And what I'm very happy to do in my world, I travel the globe, I look at other salons, I study other salons, competitive lines, um, other salons from different cultures because that helps me be a master of it. But to me, at the end of the day, people need stuff to believe in that's tangible and they need accurate information and they also need to know how they interpret the dream. Yeah. You've got to be interpretive. A lot of people don't know this, but I coach the military and we open salons there and I invented a concept called Color Bar. Well, the military have their own way. They call it Color Ops. Okay. They call take home provisions. What I'm saying is I'll put it out there what I'm doing, but it's their job to interpret that. Don't go, well, I don't have a color bar like that. Your job is not to build a color bar like mine. Your job is to interpret it in your dream. Right. Your salon's your dream. You're in business for yourself, but not necessarily by yourself. Yeah. So that's kind of where we come into play. So, you know, smart-minded people, just like great hairdressers, I just think there's not enough business. And, you know, we're here yeah. at the Millennium Conference. I love this conference because I yeah. keep score the same way these people do, we do, our schools do. So it's very apples to apples. Yeah. So this conference is one of my favorites I do. Uh, not the biggest audience I do in some of these rooms, but the intent, and I know I speak hairdresser here, an owner yeah. here, they know I do what they do. So, um, you know, the business part, hairdressers will spend 50% of their career, 80% of their career watching another haircut, another color technique, another updo, yeah. when you can get on the internet without leaving your living room, find <laughs> more information right. you can imagine, and yet how much time do we spend developing the dialogue, the DNA of success, looking at vital signs, indicators, labor costs, you know, all these different fluctuating points We've got to be kind of schizophrenics of the modern world, half businessman, half artist. Right. And I think that's a big part and why this particular users group, and I love that name, users group, <laughs> like we're addicts. But um, <laughs> what I love is there's some very successful business owners out here, some bigger than you and I, and we're pretty big boys ourselves. And that is humbling that people, even at $3 million scores, are coming in to find out new material. Right. I don't care who you are and how good you got it, something can change every day that has to make you adapt your new system. So it's understanding that no matter what you built, there was a guy before Sassoon came along, his name was Teasy Weezy. He was the first hairdresser of his own private jet. He had an entourage of 32 people that traveled with him. He wow. was a roller setting king. He did Hollywood movies. He's been credited on Hollywood. When Vidal started this precision haircutting, Teasy Weezy said, that'll never catch on. <laughs> Teasy Weezy died many years later, broke. Okay. Meaning you cannot define what will change. Yeah. It will change. I love when I interviewed Vidal. I, I said, tell me about the blow dryer. He said, you mean the hand dryer? <laughs> and he talked about how that was invented and the way it came alive. Yeah. And I said, did you invent it? He said, no. Many people at the same time made the discovery. You know I'd have lied and said I did. <laughs> I just love the fact that there's commonality. We're all sort of getting closer to it. And there is multi-times people discovering at the same exact moment. Right. So who owns it? I'm not quite sure. But that understand that you've got to keep reinterpreting your business year after re- re- it never stops yeah i mean I, t- I went at the end of my business class i have a slide that has a picture of a old movie theater and it's being torn down and it says on the sign it says uh that's all folks thanks for 30 years and what i say to everyone is 
that business still looks 30 years old. Yeah. And that's what happened. The evolution of a movie theater now is lazy boy recliners yeah. and, and, you know, alcoholic beverages and a server at yeah, your thing. Yeah, so yeah. if you don't evolve and go with the times, I mean, that's what's great about this conference. Everybody's using pretty much computer software yeah. and everybody's listening to every word that every artist is sharing about numbers and systems and all of that. Well, it's said, and I can't datafy it, 20% of the industry is automated. Now, it can only be really one reason. Some people don't want to declare everything, so they want to hide, and I'm just saying, Yeah. I, I love being an American, I love paying taxes, and I, I think there's some other benefits. Uh, it's part of what makes the world go around. You think I pay a lot of taxes, I imagine what John Paul must pay. <laughs> right. And yeah, I remember the first tax bill I got, it was $100,000, my partners got upset and cried, and I got happy, because I knew if I had to pay a hundred grand, I must have made a million bucks. Exactly. So to me, it's part of what the American dream is, it's part of what we got to do. Automation, if you can't inspect something, you can't correct it. Hairdressers for years have worked for 25 years, end up in the grave, and never got what they were capable of because they never looked at the success and the footprint success leaves behind. Until our industry starts keeping score in a similar way, we'll never get to what's possible. So with your show and what we could do collectively, I'm just saying, it's not the size of your salon. Pick up Mevo. It yeah. doesn't matter how big you are. The point is, no longer can we work off of paper books. We've yeah. got to start quantifying it because kids that join your company have a career path in mind. And if I'm going to accept you as an employee, I've made the exchange promise that I'm going to help you develop your dream. Right. I can only do that not with emotion, but with absolute data of here's where you are, here's what you got to do to get what you want to do. Yeah. And numbers help me do that. So if it can't be inspected, it can't be corrected. I'm sick of giving people information. I want to give them transformation. Enough talk. It's like Charlie Brown's parents at a hair show. I go to <laughs> hair shows everywhere and I listen to the other guys. I say, wah, 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 wah. Yeah. Like, what are you saying? Too much talk, not enough action. Right. I said it today when I still opened up the show. Stop taking shit. Start doing shit. Get busy. Make your own show. Make a video. Do a photo shoot. Get out there. Put it out there. Right. Too many people are waiting on Ed McMahon to knock on their door and go, you just won a million dollar sweepstake. You got to get it out there. And I'm just saying every day I'm seeing kids that are doing what it takes uh, and not being denied because nobody can deny you what you're after. Uh, not your color of skin, your educational background, where you live. I don't care if it's the Mid-South, Missouri, Memphis, Tennessee, Nantucket. It matters not. Yeah. Uh, I started in Memphis, Tennessee. So Andy could come in from anywhere. Um, you don't need to leave, live in New York or Manhattan to get I, it all. I started in Iowa. so It makes no difference. Yeah. So that's the beauty of the beauty industry. And, you know, the people that you can study and the people you can look with on the Internet and Facebook and really get all these ideas and then start to create your own opinions. You know, uh, I see a lot of guys post on Facebook what they don't like. I'm so sick of hearing what people don't like. Tell me what you love. Right. Tell me what drives you crazy with passion because I too much negatory in the world. Yeah. So I'm more interested when I hear platformers is what, you know, what they're about, not what they're not about. You know, what they like about the beauty industry, not so much of what they don't like. I see a lot of people out there playing the hate game. Yeah. Like they're player haters, like we're rap stars. Yeah, you know we have this. They don't have so this. It's yeah, know, it's back. Now pointing at the manufacturer. Well, they're the manufacturer. Where would we right. be in the beauty industry without manufacturers like Paul Mitchell, Aveda, Tony and Guy? Right. The industry would be so fragmented, so scattered. Uh, we need people to believe in. We are committed 100%. Um, I'm a rock star, movie star, platform artist, but I travel with 10 others that are just as famous as I am. Right. And we've got six, 700 educators, I meaning we believe this stuff. And it's about the legacy we leave behind. So manufacturers are not the devil, and businesses that are profitable are not the devil. You know, we're pro for profits, the American dream. But what do manufacturers do? They help unite an industry. They give salons of independent stature a voice, a connection point. So to me, even though I'm the Paul Mitchell guy, there's a reason why I buy Paul Mitchell. Because what I need more for my salon empire is staff. Right. And what they grow more than any other company I've been affiliated with is staff, future professionals. So, you know, when you're picking a company, it can't just be, well, I'm not going to use Paul Mitchell. They've been around for 1980. They're old news. Well, if you looked right. at this lately, we're like cornflakes. Rediscover cornflakes. Because when I'm coaching your business, what I think you need is staff. I think you need is systems. We provide those free for just being a customer. A lady asked me, can I get you into the salon? I said, well, I'll tell you, it's going to cost you money because you're not a customer. Right. Uh, if you were my customer, you get me for free. So there's a benefit to it. And I'm just saying that if you've got something to do, manufacturers are a great avenue. Um, my manufacturers helped me become an icon of the beauty industry. And not many manufacturers would let a little guy become up and be as big as they are because right. they'd be feared that he's going to go break away and start his own product line. Well, 
I'm not inspired by having my name on a product line. I once had my face on panties. That was some cool shit. <laughs> but to have my name on a bottle of shampoo, every day I see a bottle of shampoo with the name Paul Mitchell on it, I feel that is my name. Right. I am happy to say that I am a product of Paul Mitchell from beauty school on. The success I've enjoyed is thank you to the company I've represented loyally for 30 years. Um, it's really that simple. Yeah. Put your time in. You know, it's the rite of passage. Believe in who you're around. Find the people that speak to your heart. Not just people say, oh, come work for me. I'll pay you more. Right. You may take that deal and hate it. I'm just saying if something speaks to you, a company speaks to you, that's the indicator you're looking for, that that's the company you should join. And the same success I've discovered at Paul Mitchell, I don't doubt that you'd find that same journey within your grasp. You know, yeah. it makes no difference. And I think that it's just all about taking the opportunity. And I... I did not plan on waking up today talking to you, so I really appreciate that. Um, but, you know, I didn't even bring bathing suit to this event, you know, because I knew that this is, I want to spend the entire event talking to people like you. And, you know, I, I don't need to be at the beach. I can do that other times. And just spend the day learning about the business because that's Absolutely. what's going to make you, um, Maybe you know. Maybe 15 years ago, I'm in China with John Paul. We launched there. And he said to me the next day, because he's such a papa to me, I'm going to take you to see the Great Red Wall, uh, China Red Wall. Yeah. You can see it from satellites looking down. It's such a man-made fixture. Wow. And I said, no disrespect, John Paul. I can see that on Discovery Channel. I'm going to go visit Chinese hair salons. In that trip is where I found Wash House, Dark Room Shampoo. So, again, the thief, the pirate I am, taken from many. Yeah. Um, if I had went to see the Great Red Wall, I would have missed out on an opportunity to come up with a concept that has revolutionized how people think about their salon yeah. sink. Um, so when I look at the concepts I'm able to find, it's not because I'm so smart. I'm just lucky enough to get out there. Yeah. And I'm able to see and subtract like Salvador Dali, seeing what other people didn't see. It makes a big difference. So I think you're doing the right thing. Absolutely. Life is too short. So many people come to the show for the party. Right. Um, there's so much you can do. And you decided to come into this Millennium Experience and get the most out of it. Yeah, we had this set up actually in our hotel room on the round table. And then last night I was like, you know what? Maybe we should put that on the big stage. Let's just ask. Let's just ask and see what happens. You know, and then it ended up here and now we're with I, you. John, and are you charging for rental? Yeah. Do I have to pay for this? I don't know if you heard that little faint <laughs> sneeze. That was John Harm. He's got a little <laughs> sneeze like a little girl. I'd hate to hear him fart, to be quite <laughs> honest. So one... Very last thing, Mevo is coming out. Yes, John showed the um, uh, John. It's called uh, gamification. Gamification. So, what is exciting you about this? Because I'm I'm floored and I can't wait to bring it into my salon. Well, so what? I hope John Harms never hears this. Uh, yeah. But when I first became a, a customer of his and we made a partnership at Paul Mitchell. He explained how robust Millennium was, and boy, is it. And for guys like him, programmers and all their team, yeah, but we're hairdressers. Right. So I think there's two great things about this new breakthrough. One is it's a streamlined version of it, but what I love is 60% of the industry is now independent. Now, something shifted. It was 50-50 for many years. After the last recession, 2007, 8, 9, the industry decided for no longer were they going to have faith in certain salons. So I'm just saying... Like it or not, yeah. how we're paid as hairdressers has got nothing to do with it. Like it or not, there's an independent workforce. So they still need numbers. They still need reports. They need to control merchandise, inventory, balance their checkbook, pay taxes, and all this stuff. So what I love about this, this is very catered towards the independent. Where I see it for my big salons, I could see us doing, you know, uh, chair side checkout starting to work with things instead of why would I have you sit yeah. in my salon for three hours to go make you wait online to go pay right just like a beautiful restaurant dining I see so many implications but I'm just saying um, you know I, I want to do this whole Barry Manilow thing and now for my next number I meaning I am ex inspired by numbers yeah numbers speak to me you know it's like uh, it's a beautiful thing so I think hairdressers they start to get it and the simple part of it and the, the graphics and all the thing it, it speaks hairdresser too and I think they're going to love it. And the choices and options of which device you want to run it on. It used to be to say, oh, I'm going to get into software. Well, I can't afford software. I'm not into it. What I love about it is the price point. I don't care what budget. A friend of mine in London, Angus's future wife, their mom and dad own a salon. Okay. I said, I'm going to get you Mevo. It's a six-chair salon. I said, I'm going to hook you up. I know some people. And she goes, oh, I can't afford a computer. I said, buy an iPod or I'll give you an iPod. There's no reason. And money I'll never take as an excuse. When people say, oh, if I had your money, I'd do that. The smartest shit I ever did as a kid was when I had no money. The yeah. smartest thing JP and Paul ever did was when they had no money. Yeah. Some people get money, they get stupid. And I'm just <laughs> saying, let's not get stupid about this. Right. So to me, 
what John's doing, and I had a choice of which partner I po chose out of the beer industry. There's other software companies. I interviewed six, but John spoke to me like no other. Yeah. And that was why I knew he would be the partner that we would choose at Paul Mitchell, and he would be a partner I would recommend anybody in the world that wanted software to go to because I think he understands our business. Yeah. And when he said yesterday at the opening of the event that he wants to help your lives be better, I believe him. Yeah. And that's why we're partners yeah, today. Yeah, the first time I went to, I was at this conference, it was, you just know, it's just like being at a Paul Mitchell, um, you know, the the uh, the gathering or yep. anything. Yep. It's it's a feeling that you get that you're surrounded by a company that cares about the success of your business. And, and they're smart. And that's what I love. Like, it's not, you talk to any other company. I've talked to the other software companies that call my salon. And, you know, they don't, they don't understand frequency of visit. They don't, that, they're not focused on that. They're focused on making it, uh, something look good mm -hmm. and then putting it out well, there. They got all the graphs, all the bells and whistles, yeah. all the stuff. But what got me with John, he said, what is your reservation to do when she comes to work? She takes her coat off and waits for the phone to ring. Then he showed me an active list. He showed me what she could do. And suddenly that day's business changed. And we decided as a company now that we have the power to shift it every day. Yeah. And we do it every single day. We keep scoring. We do more. The old way was looking a quarter, looking a month back, a week past payroll, and wondering where we went wrong. You yeah. can't fix looking it. Looking at the past. Day to day, day to day. And I'm just saying, we've recovered a company that lost millions of dollars during the recession, thanks to John from frequency of visit, all the data points. I love being a coach for the industry, so they'll ask me a question, I give them the answer, and they don't like the answer, meaning you don't really want to hear the truth. Right. Numbers don't lie. The old way of running the business was emotion. The new way is running on statistics and knowing that there's actually a DNA of success. And if you really say what you mean and you mean what you say, you want to be successful, these are the things you got to do. And once a kid learns that from me, no matter where they go in the world, open their own salon, move down the street, whatever, they will be successful. Yeah, I mean, that's what I did. I, you know, I listened to your CDs I've, uh, and um, seriously, mm. over and over, driving to Paul Mitchell classes, back and forth in my car. And, you know, you just implement. I was able at 25 to buy Sam Burns Salon. Yep, yep. And I knew exactly what I wanted to do with it because I already had my roadmap. And then from there, I got to expand it and, and you know, develop it and try to make it my own feeling, you know, but it was great. And that's where people need to, to be at these kind of events and at the gathering and yeah. to hear people like you talk so that they can have that. Well, this is, John doesn't know this, but this is kind of fun because most of these people don't know me at this event, you know, so they kind of come in with this little, like, oh, I'm not going to touch him. He's going to sell me Paul Mitchell. <laughs> uh, but what I really do is sell people on the beauty of the industry. And I don't care who you do business with. I want you to love them. Uh, I make statements, are you in love with your hairdresser? Uh, we talk about it matters who you do business with. So, you know, look at the companies you do business with. If they're good, tangible people and you're doing business, you've got a great relationship, they're giving all you want, then stay with them. Yeah. I have no problem with that. There's exactly. enough for all of us. Right. Um, so I'm not trying to dominate the world, but I do want to find a job for my future professionals because no matter where you go to school, they need a job and a career path. Um, so to me, if we could do something together, it'd be getting people automated, getting them on software, because this is the advantage. If we, just like a language of hair cutting, if we can all agree that we understand the word geometry, we understand graduation, we understand layer, if the world kept score in a similar way, we would be able to help each other in a much better right. way because we'd be comparing apples to apples. Yeah, That's what makes my job as a coach so difficult that people are working on paper books, not using technology. If you're not using technology today, I got a message for you. 1980 called, they want their eight track back. <laughs> right. It is time for you to embrace it. Uh, whether it's Twitter, Pinsta, I don't even know them all. I can't even keep up with it. I don't care what it is. Right. The old days to see Paul Mitchell, you had to go live and see the man on stage. The new way is using the internet, using the, the great force of technology to find out anything you want to do. I spend more time on my iPad than any other device, researching shows, music, choreography. I can find anything, inspiration yeah. with forks, anything you can imagine, music made with balloons, anything I can trigger in, I can find. Yeah. You know, so that's the part that I think is really gives a person a chance to really be active towards what they really want. Mm -hmm. And the difference between me and maybe some of the listeners out there is 30 years of experience. If you apply yourself today, listening to what I say, you can accelerate your experience. And what took me 30 years, right. you could do in 10. Right. You can grasp, you know. I think I wasted a lot of time in my early 15 years of the industry. The last 10 or 15, I've really accelerated a bit. But I didn't sell myself short. But what could I have done? I'm just saying 
Don't think, well, well, I'm 30 years in, I'll be successful. What can you do to accelerate? If you're doing five a day, that's making you five good. If you're doing 10 clients a day, you'll be better. Right. Uh, you want to double your experience, you got to double your clientele. And that's not just to make more revenue, it'll help your speed pick up. Uh, a girl said to me yesterday, well, I, I'm running behind all the time, and you know it takes me this long, and I did four haircuts in 20 minutes. I'm like, well, you're talking to the wrong guy. Now, you would never think your pace can quicken, but you hang out with a guy like me, it will quicken. Right. Because I used to hang out with my platform partner, Jean Bra. She'd have cut four heads, and I was still working on my first one. <laughs> right. And by the time I finished working with Gina's platform partners, my pace was a little superior to hers. Even the great Takashi, one of the fastest in the world, has a trouble keeping pace with me. Being a salon hairdresser is about having pace. Um, it's about, Stephanie calls it pacement. It's about understanding that time management is the key. And spending a week on a haircut is a beautiful thing if you're demonstrating and making a video. But real time, you've got to be able to move on a faster pace on certain times. Right. Um, so training is something people got to do. And I don't think you have to go to a show to do that. You could train on your own living room with a doll head, right. working with your, your pro tools. There's so many ways you can get into this. And it suddenly crazes me when I see people how little they're prepared to do for it. Like yeah. American Idol, I want it so bad. It's so funny because your actions don't say you do. Right. If you truly wanted it, you're going to do whatever it takes to get there. And that's the remarkable people that we'll see in our future that will be the future leaders of the industry. I mean, the living room is where you prepare for it. I mean, the hair show, you come here, you get inspired, but then you got to go home and you have to, that's when you actually do the work. And wow. when it's not in front of people, I mean, that's, that's where it comes from. And then you come back to a show and get inspired again. Well, you know, so it's, it's a beautiful opportunity we get. We get to connect with people and I yeah. never take it for granted. I do a lot of these shows, you know that worldwide, but it always means something to me. People say, well, what keeps you going? How come you're always so excited? I get from them, their energy is what drives me. Yeah. And I think I'll continue doing it until I know that when I'm out there and I'm looking in their eyes, they're not with me anymore, you know? Right. And I'll just smoothly slide off stage. <laughs> but somebody said, are you gonna retire? I said, probably not. If, you know, to me, retirement is ending up doing what you love. I love this. Yeah. I love this job. So I would be crazy to say, do I ever want to give it up to do what? I've got this. Yeah, what are you going to do? Well, as a young kid, the circus came to town. I was six or seven. They plotted up in my little neighborhood. And at the end, they told me they were taking me with them. And I was so devastated <laughs> when they'd left. And I was still left in my little town in Scotland. And I look later in life, and I realize I actually did run away with a circus. <laughs> and I am part of the circus attraction. You know, so yeah. it's amazing what you can wish for. Um, we talked about Vidal, and I want to kind of close with this. I did a show in London in front of him before he passed away, 6,000 hairdressers. My mother was in the audience. I dressed up as a transvestite clown. And not knowing to me, she was I, proud. I finished at the break, and he was up next. And when he got up on stage, he mentioned my name. And that made my little mama, who's no longer on the planet either, just the proudest hairdressing mom of the world because Vidal Sassoon in front of six and a half thousand people mentioned my name. Right. Well, the next day, Takashi and I went up to visit her in Scotland. She lived in Glasgow. And we were sitting in the living room. I think I cut her hair and then Takashi fixed it. <laughs> and then as we were kind of getting ready to leave, my mom said, son, I'm so proud of you. I just want you to know that. But I have a question as your mother. When you were a wee boy, which means when you were a little boy, did you ever imagine in your wildest dreams you'd be traveling the world, having your photo taken, Vidal Sassoon mentioned your name, as a wee boy, did you ever imagine? I said, Mom, as a wee boy, that's all I ever imagined. Right. That's the beauty of the beauty industry. Whatever you can imagine, you can make happen. Yeah. Just like people before us did, from Vidal to Paul and et cetera, et cetera. So I never take it for granted. I never take it, you know, I want the audience to come, but I never take it for granted. They will. And I just think it's a big part of that kind of dreamer part of it and that's where hairdressing is so different you know i don't know if it guys go and get dreaming and excited like we do we'll have to ask um, them. <laughs> but to me it's about these this passion point and i think because we come from a different educational background i think that's why we're so good at delivering it so it's about touching people's hearts and souls and i think that's the the dedication hairdressers have to have we have chosen to be servants to the people right and that's an honor and you've got to do it with 100% pride at any level. And whether you're a platform artist working with cutie models or whether you're a hairdresser behind the chair, we have a beautiful job that we want to take care of and make everybody in the world see their hairdresser in a better light. Thank you for Vidal putting out that first impression. Uh, we all owe it to each other to be this good. Yeah. And anybody who doesn't, unfortunately, are hurting the whole industry. And I'm just saying we got to get better, we got to get smarter, and we got to attract even more vibrant people. So what you and I do today are not just going to help the people in the industry. It's going to attract tomorrow's kids. I've had more kids went to beauty school because they got a load of me. 
right. just saying that's a power when you've got kids that were never thinking about going, I'm going to be a hairdresser just like yeah. him. That's a beautiful thing. And I think the better we all do, then we're going to start to bring in a whole different gene pool of people that's going to help our industry go even further. Awesome. Well, I know there was a lot of things you could have done. You just skipped lunch for this. So thank you very much, My Robert. Pleasure, Matt. Um, make sure that you follow us on Facebook. Do you want to plug anything? Uh, you, you guys look at me. It's robertcrummies.com. You can check me out on Facebook anywhere you want to talk to me. I love to hear from the people. Cool. I don't quite have your network going on there. Well, uh, I'm working very. Well, I'm sure I got a few hits from you. I got some major tweets yesterday. I was a rock star (laughs) yesterday, 2.2 million. Jesus, I feel like Justin Bieber. Um, But, you know, the the thing about it is you got to put it out there, and I really admire what you're doing. I watch your numbers. I see the people. You're connecting to the people. You have a voice, young man. Thank you. Do the right thing with it always, and any way we can help each other, you can always count on me. All right, Robert. Thank you very much. We'll see you guys on the next video. Thanks.